in early voting and on election day uh, to make your voice heard for the arts. Um, just quickly, what are some of the arts and culture events and activities that have been sustaining people over the past couple of weeks? Everybody's so shy this morning. Well, James, I will jump in. Um, I will say that uh, it was great to be able to uh, enter the Hunter Museum after so many months of its being on lockdown. And the Hunter's exhibit, the F word, is definitely worth checking out. And by the F word, they mean female. So, so uh, all of the works in the uh, exhibit are, are by uh, female artists. But uh, yeah, it was great to, to be at the Hunter and to, uh, to actually you know, be with people. I love it. What else? There's been a lot going on over the past couple of weeks. This is uh, Cam. Uh, I would like to ditto what was just said, and I'm assuming that's Monty. I don't see him on the screen here with me, but yes, uh, it's me, Cam. Is that Monty, okay, that was great at the chairman's circle, and uh, also I'd, I'd like to say how wonderful Barking Legs, the drive-in. Uh, presentations have been so you know back again for those and um, and there's others but I'll, I'll let other people speak yeah and I see in the chat um, Mark is reminding us about the online literary events uh, that the Chattanooga Writers Guild is doing and that the Southern Festival of Books just started so we can check that out too <laughs> Um, so if you don't, <laughs> if you can, uh, make sure to put your, your uh, sound on mute if you're not speaking. It sounds like we have RTV to join us today. Um. I'm not sure who that is, but I'm going to try to put it. Hi, everyone. We have been having some events, some cultural events at. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure who that is, but we can't really hear you. I'm sorry. Hello, can you hear me now? Not well. If you don't mind, just put your comment in the chat and we'll see. Hello? No, we can't hear you. I'm sorry. Oh, uh, okay. All right. Um, so we'll head on into, I just wanted to also remind you, thank you for those comments and for sharing. Uh, remind you to make sure you check out Artsfield's website uh, over the next few days for the new artist work grant that has been announced. Uh, we announced it on Wednesday. It's a great opportunity for artists and for organizations in our city. And um, we would love to have you apply for that. At our next Zoom, two weeks from now, we're gonna have a special guest from Public Art Chattanooga, who's gonna come on and talk and answer any questions people have about the grant about the requirements, the application process. Um, so we are excited to welcome her and um, look forward to getting lots of awesome applications for that project. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead now and just uh, share the agenda. And today we have um, Claire and Smita who are gonna talk about some education related um, asset mapping and um, share information with the arts community about how we can be engaged with that. And then Donna Harrison from the Chattanooga Tourism Company is going to share um, some of the work that they're doing mapping cultural and arts experiences across the city. So lots of information about maps and um, visual representation of the arts and culture throughout Chattanooga and Hamilton County. So. Um, I'm going to go ahead and mute myself and um, turn it over to Claire and Smitha. Good morning, everyone. 
Uh, all right. Um, like James said, my name is Claire Stockman. I'm the, the content lead for visual and performing arts with Hamilton County Schools. And I'm here with um, Smitha from United Way. And I think we have one more other friend from United Way. She may be signed on as Smitha as well. I think her little Brady Bunch window has the same name on it. Um, but we have a really exciting project going on. Um, and, and a lot of times in the school district, I kind of straddle that line between um, being a, a very scholarly educator and then um, being part of our thriving arts community here in Chattanooga, Hamilton County. Um, so what, uh, what we're noticing in our schools, our 45,000 students, is that many of our students, um, as you can see on this slide, are, are missing some opportunities and supports that they need to be successful. We are very aware that only 20% of a student's time is spent inside our school buildings. So while we are doing the best we can to maximize opportunities and resources inside the doors, what's happening away from the school building is 80% of a student's time. Also, um, you may have heard about achievement gaps. This is where certain um, groups have dis great discrepancies in achievement, which is telling us that kids are some kids are having opportunities and other kids aren't. What we wanna do is um, reduce those achievement gaps and ensure that every kid has the opportunities and supports that they need to be successful in life. We're here with our Arts Build family today because you guys know that the arts are a very powerful resource uh, for all of us, but for children especially um, as they're growing and learning and building their foundations for life. Um, next slide, please. So here's the solution. Are you ready? <laughs> um, we are creating student success plans that will connect every student with resources uh, to fill those gaps I just mentioned. I'm talking about individualized plans for every single student. Um, not for a class, not for a school, not generalizing, but looking at each individual student's needs and potentials and filling those gaps with resources that are going to equip those students for success in school and success beyond school. So that every single student is academically and vocationally productive, socially and civically connected, physically and emotionally healthy and safe. And I don't have to tell this group that all of those adjectives fall completely in the realms of the power of the arts, right? We're talking about socially and civically connected, right? Those are things that the arts do. Um, productive, these are things we learn in the arts. And then healthy and safe, right? The arts help us um, to be healthy uh, physically and emotionally. Next slide, please. Um, let's go ahead to the next one. <laughs> Thanks. So like I said, we're making individual student success plans and we're looking at these facets for students, social, emotional, health, family, academic, so that every student can be ready to learn and thrive. And remember, we're talking about that 20% of a student's time that's spent inside the school building or these days virtually connected to their school building. And then additionally, that 80% of their time outside of the school building. We cannot do this alone. We need our vibrant community um, and we're counting on our village. So next slide. All right, so this is um, a, a view of our progress so far. We're really proud of this work um, because last year, you may not have noticed, last school year was kind of wacky. <laughs> <laughs> um, and still, through our strong leaders in this area, we were able to um, get many, many, many of these individual success plans done um, to conduct this pilot year and to have some great success. Um, so in 2019-2020, the school year that we'll live in infamy, um, we were in eight schools doing this work and learning a lot about the progress. Um, next slide. For this year, the wackiest school year, second only to last year, <laughs> we're expanding, of course, um, because this work is, is too important to delay. So this year we're in 14 schools and we've got some more support people around this. We've expanded to two case or two program managers, six SEL case managers, 
And um, a little insight, the school district is really doubling down on this focus on SEL this year and has provided a lot of new social emotional learning supports for the adults in the building and the students in the building. Um, would love to talk to you about that on a different day with a different set of slides. <laughs> um, today we're talking about student success plans. Uh, next slide, please. So here's what we've figured out. We've made these student success plans and we've started matching students to resources that fit for them. Um, it's really important though that we have an inventory of lots and lots of different resources so that we can meet individual needs for students because that's when real growth and equipping happens. Um, so in August 2020, there was an analysis of the asset mapping project so far. So just to review a little bit, we've got these student success plans and we're using our asset map to match up the student success plans with actual resources in the community because that's where 80% of students time happens. Um, so we're doing pretty well getting a start on the asset mapping 373 resources from 188 providers 148 of uh, the resources are internal, 225 are external, that's meaning internal to the school district, supports that we have for students, and then 225 are external in the, um, in the community. Yep, next slide. <laughs> oh, are we in? Okay, sorry, this was one of those magic animated slides, but I don't think it's gonna do it. <laughs> Okay, that's okay. Um, so this is a breakdown of the types of resources that uh, that are collected so far. And what we're trying to do today is grow our collection of resources. We're coming to the arts community because, as you know, the arts have such strong potential for supporting learners and students and, and all of the goals of the Student Success Mapping Project. Um, so you can see based on the titles, the different types of resources we've got so far. And if you look on the left hand side about halfway down, there's the arts based resources, 5% of total services. Now, if you and I have worked together, you know that 5% is not nearly enough for Claire Stockman <laughs> for arts representation. <laughs> So here's what we need. We need your help to grow um, the inventory of arts resources. So we want the arts to have a bigger slice on this pie chart um, because, again, we know that humans need arts and we know that that starts with our students and with their families in our communities. Um, we're so, so lucky and blessed in Chattanooga, Hamilton County, that we have got lots and lots and lots of arts happening. Um, professional artists, arts organizations, museums, programs, um, and what we want to be able to do is create strong, strong, strong alignment to student need. That's where we need your help. Um, right now, only 5% are arts-based resources. Um, and today we'd like your help to grow that. So um, we can go ahead to that final slide. And I'm noticing that Miriam has already put up the, um, the link to a form so you can participate. If you, no, not if, when you fill out that form in the link, <laughs> um, you'll be contacted about your services that, that you can provide. Um, and it might be that you're not doing that yet, but you have the capacity to do that. It may be that you only serve in a certain community or a certain area, that's fine. We've got kids there. Um, we are hoping to make more and stronger connections. And I know that we ask a lot for arts, artists and arts organizations, Excuse me. I know we ask a lot for artists and arts organizations to sign up for this roster and help us with this research. Um, but this one is a direct line to 44,500 students who need you. You know there's a kid who's not being reached who needs to paint after school. You know there's a kid who's not being reached who needs to dance, right? We all know about Misty Copeland. She didn't start dancing till she was 12, and now she's one of the foremost ballerinas in our country, probably the world. Um, so I'm inviting you to join us. This is a partnership with Hamilton County Schools and United Way as we grow our student um, support and through matching up community resources. Um, so thank you. I don't, Smitha, do you wanna add anything? 
No, thank you, Clara. That was perfect. Um, I thank you guys so much for the possibilities of, of, of growing the space of arts programs that are available to students all over the district. We really need them right now. Um, there's actually of those 5%, there's really only um, 12 that are that are maybe some of you guys or some people that you know. So obviously if there's 50 individual, 52 individuals on this call, there's significantly more even just here that we could be uh, doing to, to grow this number. So thank you, Claire. If you guys have questions about the process that we're taking for this asset mapping or other information about it, feel free to reach out to me. Thank you. And um, Claire the, and Samita, if you all send us a little paragraph and uh, we have the link, we'll send it out in our e-newsletter and also share it by email to lots of different artists too. Um, does anyone have any questions before we move on to our next guest? Um, this is Rodney. So is this, are, you, are these programs um, intended to be free to the students or is there a, you can charge a fee or what's the expectation to, to clarify that? Or is that on the form? Yes, any specifics that you have as far as payment, you just include it on the form just so we know. So the way that it works is that once a counselor, social worker, teachers meet with students to do this assessment of their, of their strengths and their interests, then what they do is they meet with families and or just a student to connect them to that other service. So as much information as you can put on the form, the better, so that we'll, it, it'll be clear all around, you know, what your requirements are. Um, I don't know if you saw in the chat, Henry is asking, can you provide some examples of art research resources that you currently have? Um, I don't have the list open. Anne, are you on still and could share that? Yeah, I am on. So um, I got the opportunity to um, do a lot of this work this summer of contacting organizations in town and adding to this list. Um, and I'm trying to think of what some of those specifics might be. Um, so a good portion of them when you um, before in Claire's presentation saw um, internal resources, those are gonna be um, programs that are being offered only to students in specific schools. Um, so that might be something like an after school dance program at Barker Academy or um, something that's school specific. And then outside as in terms of external resources, um, Again, I'm trying to think of specific, that might be something like, um, you know, Valley, Tennessee doing um, their uh, summer program for students from local schools and it's free of charge. And I'm not sure if they're doing that anymore, but that was on an old list. Um, so um, those are just some examples. So anything that um, an organization might be doing that is specifically geared towards any students K through 12. And um, thank you. And Monica is asking, does this work with the students happen virtually or in person? Either and both. All right. Any other questions? Well, we want to thank you for reaching out to us. We'll help get the word out and we're excited to continue sharing this opportunity with the community and the art sector here locally. Thank you. So I'm going to stop sharing and I'm going to turn it over to my friend Donna Harrison and her colleagues from the Chattanooga Tourism Company. All right. Good morning, everybody. I kind of felt like, are you seeing my screen now? I see you. There we go. Now I see your screen. Perfect. I felt like family because I had my job previously uh, from Chattanooga Tourism was United Way. So Smitha, hey girl. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. I am so excited to be here and see everybody uh, virtually again. I'm kind of tired of saying virtually again, but hopefully 
we'll be able to see each other in person very soon. Uh, I have brought along some of my awesome colleagues as well. So uh, Sean Phipps is on the line and also Michelle Lawson. And we're going to go over a little bit of some of the things that we're doing with the Cultural Heritage and Arts segment. If you don't know me, my name is Donna L. Harrison. I am the Director of Cultural Tourism for Chattanooga Tourism Company. And my job is to create a brand visibility for the arts. I work on the marketing team. My goal is to advocate for CHA. And as we've said here before, I've said it several times and I've seen James post it several times. A lot of people come to Chattanooga for outdoors, but they stay here and they keep coming back because of the arts. So a little bit about cultural heritage and arts that I'm doing really quick. The reason why heritage is on there as well is because we found that as people visit and want to see the arts, they also want to know about the history in every place that they visit. So that's why I oversee cultural heritage and arts components. So I'm going to go to the next slide or not. There it is. Yay, it worked. All right. So if you don't know much about Chattanooga Tourism Company, we are formerly known as the Chattanooga Convention and Visitors Bureau. I don't want to make the assumption that everybody knows what we do, but our goal is to promote and develop visitor experiences for our community's economic and social prosperity. Through this slide, we're going to go over a little bit of things that we've noticed with trends and marketing and how we've pivoted to market Chattanooga so more visitors can come to the market and also appreciate the arts and so many more of the authentic assets that we have here in Chattanooga. And big shouts out, there are a few board members and also Cultural Heritage and Arts Coalition members that are on this call. We appreciate everything you do. All right, when it comes to our attraction attendance, in 2019, we were booming. Of course, but you see we took a really strong pivot when it came to March and April, and I'm going to pass the torch to Sean Phipps to share a little bit more about some of our marketing efforts. Sean, are you there? I am so here, and I see so many names of people that I dealt with um, positively when I worked at Nougat.com on this call that I haven't seen in several years, so shout out to everybody from the old school days. Uh, Donna, yeah, you mentioned, um, you know, especially you know, how we had to pivot. This slide is a perfect example of where we are right now. In terms of attraction attendance, if you notice, it's, it's positive. Uh, we did have that major drop in March, uh, April, but then it started to tick back up in May and we've seen a steady incline in attraction attendance uh, over the past few months. And so that, that, that kind of idea is why we decided to completely pivot our marketing plan. Uh, back in March, our goal was to uh, deliver our brand new branding to you. We have a brand new logo, uh, a whole new branding message, but we did pivot and now we are kind of in pandemic marketing mode. And so what you're going to see from us is a message, uh, a big message of ingraining safety, instilling confidence, and then inspiring visitation with the first two caveats, knowing that when you get here, you're going to be safe and being confident that there are still things to do when you're here. All of this data is, um, kind of leading the marketing as we move through and the, and the marketing suggests that people want to travel but they want to travel somewhere that is safe and so we are trying to market chattanooga as a safe destination you'll be seeing a video come out soon uh, on across many different platforms that kind of highlights what the experience is like in chattanooga now when you visit you'll see masks you're going to see hand sanitizer that's just the way it is we're also going to be looking for uh, different opportunities um, we do see an opportunity now because Chattanooga is positioned in a way that our drive-in markets, many of the major cities surrounding us are trying to uh, find a way to get out on the road. They're taking more road trips. Uh, they're seeking outdoor activities, especially now that the leaves, and uh, according to some stats, I saw the peak leaf uh, viewing is gonna be ready in a few months. So we hope to encourage fall break in Chattanooga. And really the bread and butter, especially during the holidays, is as people are coming to Chattanooga to visit friends and relatives. This is, is going to be a holiday destination. And all of this is kind of wrapped around our new internal brand promise that when you're here, we absolutely refuse to let you feel like a tourist. Thanks, Donna. <laughs> Thanks, Sean. I appreciate you using your media voice for that one. And uh, one of the reasons Sorry. why... I 
<laughs> One of the reason why, reasons why I love our new brand promise is because when you think about Chattanooga, we are very welcoming to everybody that stops by. We don't mind rolling our, rolling our window down. Now we might roll it back up, but quick, we're gonna give you some quick directions, but we don't want you to feel like a tourist once you are here. So I wanna talk about some of our CHA initiatives so people don't have to feel like tourists. And even if they live in Chattanooga, they're also, they're also excited about some of our authentic brand experiences and our, our, uh, our, uh, our authentic experiences when it comes to culture, heritage, and arts. I need to slow down. All right, so over the last couple of, couple of weeks, I really have taken a deep dive to work with the community and our community partners. That's why we have a CHA coalition and probably about 12 people from uh, different entities of the arts, culture, and heritage uh, division sit on this committee and I pretty much can bring an idea to them and they will run with it or I can bring it out to them and they can say I did to them and they can say Donna that is not a good idea. But I love this group because they are the board of the uh, culture heritage and arts division with our team. Some of the things that we're working on for more brand visibility with the arts and to advocate for the arts is the CHA spotlight, the brand ambassador training featuring CHA and the experience visual arts interactive map. So to tell you a little bit about the spotlight, you see a picture there. And I know that comes from Coyote. I want to give them a big shout out because we actually wrote a blog about the Coyote Art Studio. And I, I had the privilege of working with uh, both Jody and his wife, and I can't think of his wife because she's my sorority sister, but I'm going to think of your name in a minute. But I had a chance, Keela. There we go. So I had a chance to work with them on a few things when it comes to a blog. And as we started taking a deep dive into some of the other locations here in Chattanooga, we realized that it's very, very important to highlight things, especially while the locals are here. So big shouts out. I do the old school radio shout out to Kara from The Hunter. We were on a coalition call and she said, you know what we're missing? This is a really, really a good time for people that live in Chattanooga to really appreciate the arts. And I said, why don't we bring this to the entire team? And before we knew it, we came up with CHA Spotlight. And the purpose of the CHA Spotlight is to create more brand visibility. And it's going to be housed on our website at visitchattanooga.com. And then it will be backslash CHA Spotlight. What's going to happen there is that we're going to highlight programs, we're going to highlight individuals, we're going to highlight attractions and events and so much more. So you think about someone that does a lighting at a major concert. You think about an artist who helped, uh, who brought in a kid and we want to, just like how you guys mentioned earlier, Smith, about how important it is to pour into children, but we might feature those artists and individuals and attractions at least once a month and it also have a hashtag CHA spotlight on our Visit Chattanooga platform. So I look forward to that and we're not going to drive that, the community is going to drive that. So how it works is you'll have the opportunity to submit your information or somebody that you recommend that should be spotlighted for that month. So I'm really excited about this. My favorite motto, if you know me, is if you make the people the stars, in turn, they hopefully will support you. And I believe in the end that we have to continue making everybody the stars, especially when it comes to culture, heritage, and arts in this city, because sometimes when it comes to the arts, people don't appreciate it until a pandemic. All right. All right. So going to the next slide, I'm going to share this one with Sean because there's an ambassador training that we do every single year. But this year we changed it up a lot and CHA is definitely going to be included. So Sean, you want to talk a little bit more about that? Yeah, sure. I'll try to match your enthusiasm, Donna, and I will fail. Um, uh, no, the ambassador training program, many of you may remember that we had a hospitality training program several years back. And although it was successful, we uh, have decided to kind of switch it up a little bit. So this is going to be a year round program. It's launching this fall. We're doing some beta testing with some groups right now just to kind of get an idea of what the program should be. And what we've discovered is that it's going to be an intro to Chattanooga session. Uh, it's going to be about 90 minutes. Uh, it's going to include a calendar of, uh, you know, online independent and group experiences, learning opportunities. We go neighborhood by neighborhood and kind of tell you what's available in terms of arts, uh, culture, food. And then the program after that, we're going to incentivize anyone who takes it to come back and take walking tours to have different experiences that pop up 
in Chattanooga, including CHA experiences. So uh, looking forward to that. We're still testing it, but uh, we're close to launching it. All right. What I love about that is, and uh, just to break it down a little bit simpler, but because uh, Sean always gives really detail and I appreciate that. But give you an example, you go to a restaurant and there is a waitress or a bartender and they say, hey, what is there to do uh, in Chattanooga for the arts? And don't you hate it when you visit a city and they're like, I don't know. I mean, hey, 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 so-and-so, can you tell me what we're supposed to do? Our goal is to ensure that the hospitality crew knows everything about culture, heritage, and arts. And how are we going to do that? We're going to start it virtually because virtually is the thing. So we'll have interviews. I'll have a, I'll reach out to some of you guys. And I want you all to reach out to me because I want people to talk about Hunter Museum, Coyote Art Studio, Rise of Chattanooga, and so many more, Chattanooga Theater Center. And how do we do that is by teaching and empowering. Also, there'll be in-person videos. So I will reach out to you guys as well. If you're really interested in being featured on those, please call me and please reach out to me. I am very much so available. Monica Kenzie is on here. We text and we talk to each other on the phone. I have no problem with the calling. So I want y'all to feel comfortable in calling me as well because I'm open. Also, uh, panel discussions. I would love to bring a group together. We'll have people to feature and talk about just with the arts, just uh, to talk about the culture of Chattanooga and the history and so much more. So look out for those emails, those phone calls. And if you're not included, do not be that person with your arms folded up. Reach out to me, 423, this is my personal sale, 227-8617 and radio 423-227-8617. Call me because I would love to talk to you about how to get featured. All right, and the last thing that I want to share, I'm so excited about this. James asked the question during the opening, what have you done when it comes to arts in this community? Well, I was up, I believe in getting up early. So Stephanie Hayes and I, she's a team member, we got up early one morning and we took a tour of Chattanooga walking downtown at 7.30 a.m. And we wanted to uh, be a part of the Experience Visual Arts Interactive Map. I have a teammate on the line, her name is Michelle Lawson, and Michelle has included public art, art galleries, individual artists, and murals. And if you say, hey, there's something else that might need to be put on this once we uh, move forward, or why didn't they include this? There are other opportunities for more maps. So we're excited about that, and that's what we're here for. And right now, Michelle is going to take over the screen. But again, I want to remind you guys, my email address is Donna at Chattanooga Tourism.com, uh, Donna at Chattanooga Tourism.com. Again, my cell number which is my business line now, because we're already at home, 423-227-8617, 423-227-8617. And it's okay that it's a personal line, because now we got the block button. Yay! <laughs> so feel free to call me anytime, guys. Michelle, please show them all the great work you've done with this. And we have worked with Public Art and River City. Michelle, have I missed anybody else who we worked with with this? Um, <laughs> Arts Build has been, Catherine has been great. And also Area 61 Gallery. Yes, so go ahead, Michelle. I'm gonna stop sharing right now. All right, let me see if I can get this to go up for you. Let me know when you guys see it, Donna. Okay, I will. There it is. Okay, guys, so here we go. My name is Michelle Lawson. I'm the Director of Event and Visitor Services at the Chattanooga Tourism Company. As part of my job, I work with conventions and meeting planners that are coming to town, but I also run the Visitor Center and work with uh, the staff there at the Visitor Center. And a question we get often is, what's to do next? And also, knowing that Chattanooga has such a large art community, we thought, what kind of tool could we give to help people get around and see the arts? So as a result, I came up with the idea to do a public art map and Donna was gracious enough to work with me and get everyone into the plan with us. It's something that locals can use and visitors also. And to tie back to our marketing scheme, how else another way to be safe and healthy in Chattanooga than walking outside. So the map is really what's free for, for the public to walk around and enjoy. It's in a map form. It runs off of Google Maps and you can take it with you on your phone. It works on a laptop and a PC. And I just wanted to give you just a couple of, of points of interest and show you how it works. Um, it is a work in progress. So as you have the app, the app on your phone, you could look at this point. If you're near Manufacturers Road, 
and say, hey, what's near me? What can I take a look at? Well, this happens to be one of the ArtSpark signal boxes. And if you were to click on it, you would see an image and information from the artist. You can do directions and get more info back to ArtSpark. And for example, the directions are just like you would see on your Google Maps. It, will jump you, it would jump you out and you could figure out how to get there using Google Maps. And then um, another example would be number eight, the Chattanooga Music Man, um, a public piece of art downtown. We have an image of it directions, the artist, perhaps it may show a uh, type of medium that it was made with. And then on the river walk, people often look for things as they're walking around. Here's heavy metal, a great installation piece there. The power of the map is that it is um, mobile. Take it with you and I'm going to scan back and let you see. I'm so excited. I'm, this is a work in progress. I already have over 100 points on the map. So as people are using it and going around, I think it's going to be a really nice tool so that folks can really enjoy the, the arts in Chattanooga. We get a lot of questions about murals and we have quite a few. We've got about 25 murals that we do have in and we're in the process of adding information about the images and who did the artwork. So we're excited to be working on this and hoping to have it all available pretty soon. And with that, I'll hand it back to Donna. Thank you. And one of, one of the things, thank you, Michelle, she's worked really hard on this and worked with our partners as well. But one of the things about this map is that there would be a submission section and Michelle mentioned that uh, where if you, if you look at the map and you say, okay, my art gallery is not included. My uh, piece of artwork is not included and I want to be included. There's going to be a submission form for you to be, be able to include that soon. We have a, a next steps for us is that we make sure that we vet this with our uh, subcommittee, our MAP subcommittee and our coalition to see if we need to have, if there are any kinks, but you might see it and, and see some kinks and say there needs to be some changes. And we really, really uh, ap appreciate your feedback. So please let us know. But once we launch this, the uh, CHA spotlight, and that's going to be at the end of this month. And we'll start with our features, and we do have a uh, committee that will go through that process and help us choose how the once we get all these submissions, the order we need to go. But as we launch all these new initiatives, you guys are going to be uh, the first ones to know about it because we're going to make sure that we send it to Arts Forward Group, to uh, Arts Bill, and to all the other organizations, and also in our monthly newsletter, our weekly newsletters, and different things like that. So if you have any questions, please let us know. And sometimes people say that, you know, they're already Arts Map, they're already this, but what we know about our website at visitchattanooga.com and our platforms that most of, most of the people that actually see these um, maps are visitors. And we also want to make sure that we are really helping the economy when it comes to the community, because if people are visiting, they are visiting your locations. So, but I, uh, go ahead, Jane. Yeah, I had a question. I love the map. You know, I love stuff like that. Um, one question that I had is, well, two questions. Is, is it going to be in an app form? Like, Michelle, you can answer that if you want to. Yeah, it's, it's not an app. It's going to be really easy. It's just a link. And we also have a QR code. So just if anyone clicks on the link, it's also going to live on the, um, the Chattanooga Arts page on our website. So you can also direct people there and they can click on the links there and click on the map there. So once you have the link, it will work on any device as you're walking around. Okay, and my other question is, my I would I just wonder if there is a way that the map could also include um, like art that's not permanent, so like information about a performance that might be happening close to you or an exhibit. So well, that um, could be, we could create another map for that if it's a if it's a live performance or something like that. So like I said, as the ideas come, James, because first this is the first one we're doing and as, as we become more creative, we know that this need, our focus on this needs to be the galleries, the public art and things like that. Because right now people are traveling, I mean are um, are doing walking tours outside. So that's the, that's the key right now. But what I love during this time, I say this is strategy time for the arts community. And as I'm going to write that idea down because we have been talking about what's next for the heritage group. We would love to have a great heritage map. We would love to have uh, 
African-American history map. We would love to have, uh, you know, like those moving exhibits and things like that. So there's opportunity, the sky is the limit, but also know that um, Michelle didn't do this just yesterday. We did a lot of contacting people and she one by one input, she uh, imported that information in. And I can't say thank you enough. I'm the one that, that talks about it and, and we market it and our team is great at that. But the details, in this situation is really what matters. I love it. Well, thank you for sharing it with us. Does anyone else have questions? All right, well, thank, thank you. So thank you guys so much, I appreciate you. Thank you, and I know a lot of people will be in touch to submit and share more information for the maps. Thank you. All right, well, thank you. Um, so we have about 15 minutes left. Um, we just want to open it up and- uh, Wait, sorry. I just want to interrupt James before we um, wrap up with questions. We also had one more presenter, which is oh. uh, Mary Stargill from the hey, um, Society of Work Share. Um, and she's going to be sh uh, sharing with us about some upcoming art uh, studio tours. Hey, Mary, how are Hi, you? Hi, James. Good. Thanks, Miriam. <laughs> um, hey, everyone. I just wanted to share with you really quickly about um, artist studios that are coming in 2021. So thank you all for letting me join today's call. So um, as many of you uh, may know, the Chattanooga workspace that was home to um, several artists um, for 10 plus years, I believe, has closed this year. And so uh, that left a lot of um, artists without studio space, without a place to work. And so um, these artists um, came to Kelly Fitzgerald, who owns Society of Work, and asked if she knew of a place um, that might be possible to create artist studios. And so um, there's a place on Holtzclaw, 1601 South Holtzclaw. So um, it's south of Main Street. So there's um, Stove Works, Wheelhouse, and then kind of um, this large area. It's five different buildings. It's incredible property, but the developer was very interested in uh, creating artist studios. And so, um coming they've come together and have started with 40 artist studios um and the what's incredible about this is that there's a variety of sizes and spaces so if you're an artist and you're just needing a smaller space for your work and you want to be part of a community uh, there's studio space that starts at 185 dollars um, and then goes all the way up to about 700 square feet and around $800. So there's a variety of sizes in studio and uh, studio spaces and price, prices, but uh, this really allows a variety of um, different artists and disciplines to share the studio space. So uh, we're really excited about this project. Uh, Society of Work um, manages office space. So you may be wondering like, why the heck I'm on this call telling you about artist studios. Um, but really, um, for the last uh, seven years, we have been managing, you know, 40 plus office spaces and there's shorter term leases. So that's what's really great about this space is that uh, artists can lease a studio for six months or 12 months. So really gives you flexibility to move in and um, have the space you need, even if that's for a short time or for a longer term. And so there's gonna be shared amenities within the studio space, within this um, the space, including a gallery and classroom space for teaching. Uh, there'll be a parking spot, uh, Wi-Fi, there'll be um, shared kitchenette, a mailing address, um, there'll also be uh, shared sinks and then a loading dock. Um, so just amenities that are really crucial if you're an artist and needing a space that works for you. So um, I didn't want to tell you all the details, but I did want to invite you. I did want to kind of give you teasers and let you know that um, this project's happening. Uh, we're expecting a 2021, spring 2021 open date. There's several people on the call who I saw who um, have 
decided to um, come with us on this journey and, and make this their artist studio, um, including Coyote Gallery, Olga, Cam, Bush. I've seen several um, names and faces. So if you have questions about it, well, first of all, we'd just love to give you a tour. Um, so next Friday at 1 p.m., we're opening the doors at 1601 South Holtzclaw, and I'm gonna post the uh, Facebook um, link here. Um, but come see the space, I'm happy to share more, and um, yeah, just hear about how this can support artists in our community. Oh, thank you, Mary, and I'm sorry I almost forgot you, but thank you for coming on and sharing with us, and come back anytime to give us updates thank you. on yeah. how it's going. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. So I um, also wanted to um, introduce Artsfield's new program manager, and her name is Amy Loudermilk, and I just wondered if Amy could say hi to everybody and wave um, before we open it up for comments and announcements. Okay, maybe Amy is gone. All right, well, anyway. We will um, introduce Amy to you on the next call. And if you drop by Arts Bill, oh, she's saying her microphone isn't working. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, we're working on all of our technology over there, so we'll get it together for Amy. Um, but she's coming to us from uh, city government, and um, it's going to be running all of our programs like the Homeburg Institute, Imagine, Tech Goes Home. Um, and you can email her and get to know her at amy at artsbill.com. Um, so you'll see a lot more of her moving into the future. So I just wanted to take a, a few moments for the last few minutes and say, um, you know, if anyone has any announcements, things that they would like to share, upcoming events, projects, opportunities for collaboration, um, we're opening it up. And then uh, before we end the call today, Hi, my name is TJ Henretta. I'm uh, only a year in Chattanooga, but I'm a puppet artist and I have, um, I am collaborating with some other people in the, some other artists in the community and we're putting together a program called um, Playful Evolving Monsters. And we're doing a lot of different things, but one of the things that we're doing is a, um, an online program for families to, to um, work with us, we build monster puppets out of recycled materials and then do a little performance. And we hope to be working with the, I hope, <laughs> I think Rodney's on, um, the Chattanooga Theater Center and um, doing putting on some of our performances there and would love to get more people involved in that. So it's Playful Evolving Monsters. You can find us on Instagram. And um, my email is tj.hanretta, that's H-A-N-R-E-T-T-A, -T -T at gmail.com. And I'll put that in the uh, message, or in the chat center. Thank you. I'm so excited to be here. No, thank you. Put your email in and people can grab it. What else is going on? What other announcements do people have? Elizabeth uh, is saying she has a friend who's moved here who's a chef and he wants to do collaborative pop-up dinners at various arts locations. Um, what's a good resource for connecting him? Elizabeth, would you share your email and then if people are interested in getting on board with that project, um, they could uh, reach out to you. What else is up or what else is going on? Hi, this is Linda Allen with the Houston Museum of Arts. How are you? Hi, Linda. Hey, I want to uh, give a quick shout out. The Houston Museum this year is going to have our first time Oktoberfest. So we're going to have those every year in the future, but this year we're going to do it virtually. And we're going to start off by sharing our exquisite uh, collection of antique uh, beer steins from Germany. We're, uh, 
partnering with the Chattanooga Brewcast. So you can buy your ticket online. I'm about to post that information for you. And you can drink beer and learn and learn about Oktoberfest and the fantastic beer steins and become quite the expert. So we hope you can join us. That sounds like a lot of fun. And you're, you also are doing a young professionals group, right? Or, or young patrons group. Do you want to talk about that? I would love to. Thank you. Um, we are starting a young professionals group at the Houston Museum, similar to the one at the Hunter, which is so successful. We'd love to have our leaders in the arts community join us. We're hoping that it'd be um, kind of the under 45 crowd. We'd love to get a group of interested people together that love the decorative arts and uh, the makers of the world. There's some great technologies we have with our great glass collections. We also have uh, Native American and uh, Af um, um, American Indian art there. So if you're interested in that, would like to become a, a part of this fun group, we'd love to have you join us. We're actually looking for some initial members to actually start the club because we're wanting it to be all about you. <laughs> so please reach out to me. Uh, I know that Artsfield has been so wonderful in sharing this information. We've had one lady reach out to us. We're excited to get in touch with her, but we'd love for you to share that with your community and and get this group going. We think it'll be a fun thing. Thank you. Thank you. Linda, will you put your email uh, or phone number in the chat so people can grab it and connect to you? Any other announcements before we close out today? Um, yes, James. Uh, we have a new date for my lecture series, um, and it will be March the 18th of, of next spring. And so that that is the Art for Health lecture series will be held at the Hunter Museum, um, and I endowed that with the CHI Memorial. So that's our next date, and um, there will be a different speaker. It won't be a music therapist, Virginia Shank. She will not be able to do it, and at that time, we're, we're working on another speaker, and then Virginia will be the speaker for uh, the following year. So we will have her, but uh, she was not able to do it for this next one. All right, thanks for uh, sharing and keeping us updated, Cam. Um, anyone else? Hey, James, I have an announcement. This is Carmen Davis and- hey. Hey, um, so there'll be a new exhibition opening at Rise Chattanooga on October 12th entitled Whose Streets Are Streets? And it features the work of photographer um, Jay or John Adams um, that some of you may know. He's been capturing kind of the social our civil unrest and the protests that have been happening in the city. And so it's an exhibition featuring his artwork and it'll be on display at Rise Chattanooga. Um, we're still working out the logistics of how people can come to view it, um, but all that will be eventually available or soon will be available on Rise Chattanooga's um, social media pages as well as their website. Thank you. And let us know and we'll share it, okay? Who else? James, this is Kirsten from Creative Discovery Museum. I'll, I'll hop on the announcement train really quick. Yeah. Um, we have a, we turned 25 this year at Creative Discovery Museum. What a year to turn 25, uh, where you have to pivot everything you're doing to celebrate, um, which is what we've done. But we have a really great virtual event on October 17th. It's our birthday bash. Um, it's all day event um, for families. And there's some uh, plus 18 activities, like a lip sync challenge at the end of the night. Um, that'll be really, really fun. But the activities throughout the day include an art scavenger hunt downtown for families. So we're really excited about that. We're having people go check out different arts. We are having a paint lesson with our very own Barbara Ross, um, where we're painting on ceramic tiles. So she'll be teaching you how to do that, um, uh, as well as a lot of other things. We have some great celebrities that are helping us out. Lauren Elena, Philip Fulmer, Peyton Manning, and Damon Gillespie. Um, so we're very excited about that. Our online auction just opened up today. Um, and we have a 50-50 cash raffle where we're giving out up to $12,500. So we have a lot going on. We're, we're trying to make it happen. Um, for our birthday bash, tickets are only 25 bucks for a group of four. So it's super, super affordable. And you can tune in and out throughout the day, just whatever works with your schedule. So uh, check it out. You can find all the information on our website if you're interested. That sounds fun. Please share the information with us too, and we'll make sure to spread it and um, get it out through ArtsWire and our other social media. 
Is Barbara, does Barbara Ross have like a huge afro like Bob Ross does? You know, um, last time I saw her, she did. So I'm sure <laughs> she will do it again this time. She's wonderful. It. Her name's Amber. She's a, a staff member of ours and she's great. She's, she's really great. She did this activity for a drink and discover event that we had. Um, I think it was last year. Um, and it, and she's, she's wonderful. It's so much fun. It sounds like fun. Thank you for sharing it. Who else? Anyone else before we close up? Well, y'all, it's been awesome seeing everyone. Um, we'll see you again in two weeks. Thank you for this, uh, the, this time together. Of course, we'll share the recording and uh, Miriam will be doing a follow-up email with all of the information, the connections, the, the links, and, um, and uh, you know, just have a great weekend. Uh, have a great two weeks and we'll see you again later in the month. Take care, bye.